I lost like 10 pounds on that one. That was great. We have another great storyteller. She's been up here before. She's really funny. Her name's Caroline Johnson, and she's got a really, really enjoyable story for you. I won't, I won't spoil it, but I'll give it up for Caroline Johnson. I usually write really serious stuff. It's only for the voice box I write something funny. But I hope you find this funny. When my niece became pregnant, she and her boyfriend needed to thin out some of their animal collection, so my husband and I acquired a seven-year-old cat. Anthony first brought her to our basement wrapped in his arms like an ebony baby with a small white tuxedo mark on its neck. She explored her new terrain and seemed very happy. I was fatigued from radiation and had no interest in socializing a new cat. My own, a blind chocolate Persian, stayed upstairs. Anthony left after giving me a few instructions about how to feed it, etc. It's a very mellow cat, he said. I asked its name. It responds well to Cooper, he added. <laughs> after my husband Brad met the cat, he did his best not to pet it too often. I don't want it to depend on me, he explained. <laughs> Still, the basement was his turf, or man cave. It housed our PC, stereo equipment, a flat screen TV, futon, makeshift bar, music room full of eight guitars, a drum set, electric piano and bass, and a separate room with twin bed. Brad quickly decided to rename the cat Iggy after the rock star Iggy Pop. That should have been the first clue. <laughs> He laid out two litter boxes, offered it three kinds of cat food, and gave her the entire basement to roam. Still, the cat had its own room, a downstairs bedroom with twin bed. She also had a phenomenal view from a three-pane bay window of squirrels and birds strutting under our feeder to peck at errant seeds. I did not frequent the basement much, as it was Brad's man cave. But I did go downstairs to do laundry, listen to music, occasionally to watch the news on TV, look something up on our PC, or use the treadmill. When we got Iggy, however, I thought of extra excuses to come downstairs and see the cat. Iggy quickly allowed both of us to pet her, especially in the Lazy Boy, which became known as the petting chair. She would nuzzle against my leg, even jump on my lap. Still, she was more partial to Brad, since he practically lived in the basement, and I would find cat hair on the scanner glass, where he would allow her to sit while he was using the computer, waiting for him, or on the futon cushion, where she would frequently sleep while he was away at work. The first time she hissed at me, I had come downstairs to put a load of laundry in the dryer. I stepped back across the retro 70s ceramic tile floor, eager to go up to her and pet her. She was standing on the tile a few yards away next to the futon. She arched her back, pulled her ears back, and emitted a loud hiss. I could see her fangs and stopped in my tracks. I quickly turned around and went upstairs. Puzzled, I brought the subject up to Brad that night. He was seated at the kitchen table playing the Monopoly Jewel game, a coupon-driven game with discounts on food and unlikely chances to win cash. He held up a coupon for chicken of the sea and was looking at his scoreboard. I'm closest to getting the $10 grocery gift card. <laughs> He hissed at me tonight, I said. He looked up for a second, then said, well, did you approach her fast? Maybe she felt threatened. <laughs> I was just trying to do my laundry. She's probably just not used to you being down there, he said, then licked the coupon and fastened it to the board. <laughs> I went into my office and petted my Persian cat, Mink. She was blind, but very affectionate. Brad thought she had dementia, but I didn't agree she always found her food bowl and litter box. I picked up my copy of The Rule of St. Benedict and began reading chapter four, The Tools for Good Works. A friend had suggested the book, which was written in sixth century Rome, as it had some good advice about becoming more aware by following the Benedictine path. It was written for monks living in an abbey. In the book, 
St. Benedict pleaded his readers to love Christ above all else. Quote, you are not to act in anger or nurse a grudge, the text stated. Quote, rid your heart of all deceit. You must honor everyone. I looked out the window at the squirrels racing up a giant oak tree and wondered if St. Benedict meant all creatures, not just people, with his words. The next time Iggy hissed at me, she was on my lap in the petting chair. I had been stroking her back for about five minutes when all of a sudden she turned on me and exposed her horrible fangs and hissed loudly, then dug her back claws into my thighs and jumped off my lap. For the next month, I made it my mission to reach out to the basement cat, and while she tolerated me, she clearly was in love with Brad. She hid in crawl spaces, but inched out of them to sniff his books and clothes. She would bring him presents of toy mice lovingly deposited on his computer chair or side table. Brad and she also had a favorite position where he would crawl into his arms that were folded across his chest and nestle there, cooing like a baby. Every time I had a negative interaction with the cat, I would try to think of St. Benedict, quote, pray for your enemies out of love of Christ. years ago, quote, if you have a dispute with someone, make peace before the sun goes down. If Brad was sitting in the petting chair, she would jump on his lap and look up at him adoringly until he began petting her. Then she would put her paw across his other arm to, to prevent him from leaving or putting her down. I would observe the two while she eyed me coldly. <laughs> One day, I came into the kitchen, and he was again seated at the table playing the Monopoly Jewel game. He looked up and smiled. Iggy's such a sweetheart, he said. Last night, she alerted me there were raccoons outside the window. I didn't say anything and began boiling water for corn. I was working on putting an Earl Grey tea sticker on the $100 grocery gift card. So the $100 grocery gift card was next to the just visiting jail corner. Just yesterday, Iggy had again visited me when I slowly approached her where she was seated at the top of the futon. Admittedly, she may have caught a scent of mink on her, but she hissed and didn't move away. It's not my fault, I thought, as I closed the ba basement door. I felt like Jane Eyre finding out about Mr. Rochester's crazy wife he was hiding in his attic. <laughs> Only for Brad, he was, his cat was closeted in his basement. <laughs> Brad suggested I come down to the basement more often and spend time with Iggy. I was hesitant, but then remembered St. Benedict's advice. <laughs> do, not, do not repay one bad turn with another. Love your enemies. If people curse you, do not curse them back, but bless them instead. I suggested we both sit on the futon with her. We tried this with Brad putting the cat between us. At first, she allowed me to pet her. Then, after a few minutes, she began nuzzling his leg and moving to his side of the futon. She turned her back so she didn't have to look at me. <laughs> I decided to take the high road. I realized it may seem to her that I was attacking her, but I honestly could not think of any reason why the cat would hate me except that it was jealous. She was very territorial of Brad. After my cat Mink died, we allowed Iggy to come upstairs, away from Brad's man cave. It seemed to enjoy the newfound freedom, exploring our kitchen, the sun porch, the living room. I decided to just let sleeping dogs lie and remain quiet, as St. Benedict wrote, quote, there are times when even good words are to be left unsaid out of esteem for silence. <laughs> Once, when we were nestled in bed talking, I heard a noise, and we discovered that the cat had jumped onto our king bed. It walked around, then settled on Brad's side before leaving. I can only imagine that it might get lonely downstairs. Instead of hairballs, Iggy pukes up her cat food every, about once a week, leaving marks on the linoleum. Still, despite her sleek fur and muscular build, despite the fact that people have described her as beautiful, I can only see her fangs like the incisors of one of the deer skulls that Brad has collected and put on display on the window ledge. <laughs> I decided to try different tactics. I began by bringing her fresh, wet cat food, thinking she would love me as much as Brad, since he only feeds her dry. She was hesitant, but gradually she came up to the bowl and ate, then disappeared into the music room. I tried this several times, then tried to go into the music room afterwards. She would hide behind the drum set. I would take all this in stride, trying to learn the humility that St. Benedict so wanted his followers to attain. Quote, 
Under difficult, unfavorable, or even unjust conditions, our hearts quietly embrace suffering and endure it without weakening or seeking escape. <laughs> she has a sweet mew, which I can hear when Brad comes home from work every day and walks down the basement stairs. The mew is loud and is saying, I have waited for you, master, and now you are home. <laughs> Try as I might, it is very difficult for me to adhere to St. Benedict's motto, quote, whether sitting, walking, or standing, our heads must be bowed and our eyes cast down. I have to admit, truthfully, that if I had to choose two items to take with me out of a burning house, sadly, Iggy would not be one of them. <laughs> one time, at a hospital ER visit for a deep cut to my thumb, the nurse on duty asked me several routine questions, ending with, has somebody abused you at home for the last six months? <laughs> I looked at her in disbelief. And then she said, well, we, we have to ask that. I thought for a moment, oh, yes, I said. My husband's cat, she hisses at me. Does that count? <laughs> as a kind of joke, I began to rename the cat. I referred to her variously as Vamp, Drac, Dr. Jekyll, Jack the Ripper, Princess of Darkness, and Panther. I can no longer count on my hand how many times she has hissed at me. As a result, I have decided to retreat and let her be the master of her lair. She belongs down in the basement with Brad's wooden ducky he made in grade school, his ugly paper mache Christmas tree ornament, the photos of him fishing, his collection of deer antlers and skulls, and his forest preserved boundary signs. She has found a home among all these memorabilia, including Brad's Johnny West toy collection, the retro 70s flooring, and his vintage beer can. Like Jane Eyre, I no longer want to fight the psychotic demon that roams our basement. <laughs> Unlike St. Benedict, I do nurse a grudge. May she rest in peace, and hopefully our house will not burn down. <laughs> up this song and it literally the name Johnson is in the song I swear to God <laughs> oh Mrs. Johnson had troubles of her own <laughs> Yellow cat, which wouldn't leave its home. She tried and she tried to give the cat away. She gave it to a man going far, far away. The cat came back the very next day. The cat came back, though they thought she was a goner. But the cat came back, it just couldn't stay away. Now Mrs. Johnson round the corner swore she killed the cat on sight Loaded up a shotgun with nails and dynamite She waited and she waited for the cat to come around Ninety-seven pieces of Miss Johnson was all they found Cause the cat came back the very next day The cat came back, they thought she was a goner But the cat came back just would stay away. Now she gave it to a man going up in a balloon. She told him to take that fucking cat right straight to the moon. The balloon came down about 90 miles away, but where he is now, nobody can fucking say. Cause the cat came back the very next day. Came back, they thought she was a gonna, but the cat came back, it just wouldn't stay <laughs> So they gave the cat to a man going way out west, told him to take that cat to the petting chair and give it all the love and the love the best. And the first train hit the curb and then it jumped the rail. 
not a soul was left behind to tell this gruesome tale because the guy came back Hang on. <laughs> this song is apocalyptic. <laughs> Who knew? Okay. The atom bomb fell one bright summer day when they dropped the H bomb the very same way. Russia went, England went, and then the USA. The human race was finished without a chance to pray, but the cat came back. The very next day, the cat came back. It was the only thing alive on the planet. The cat came back. The cat was the ultimate ruler on Earth. I didn't know that the atom bomb. Was in this song. Did you? And that wasn't on the Electric Company when I used to hear this. Song. Okay. I think it was a cleaner version on TV. Much. But Kathy Richardson, that's why you get paid the big bucks. Yeah.